you can see me and my slides. Yes, sir. Okay, great. Take it away. All right, so. <clears throat> Hi, enhancing I2B2 patient data with social and environmental determinants of health. This is an ontology and a toolkit that we put together at the University of Southern California. My name is Mark Abadjian, and I was um, formerly with USC, the Southern California Clinical and Translational Science Institute. You see the logo down in the lower left of the slide. Um, I separated from USC last year, but I'm happy to be here to share this information with you on behalf of USC. So today is just an introduction of who I am, what we're doing, the who, what, when, where, and why. I'll explain the CEDO data sources, where we get our CEDO data from. I'll describe and show you a demo of the ontology. I'll discuss a couple of use cases from USC um, and then expose you to the Senday toolkit. Um, I won't be running a demo of the toolkit. That's a little bit complicated. But um, then I'll show you some resources where you can get the information from GitHub, et cetera. So um, if we have time, then Q&A, but I'm not sure about that yet. So anyway, um, I have 30 plus years of experience in software development. The last four years when I was at USC, I was involved in informatics. I retired from USC in 2022. I'm a native of Los Angeles. I'm fluent in Armenian. I'm volunteering today representing USC's clinical research informatics team that I was a member of for four years. Today, I'm giving an abridged version of the, of the talk that I gave in July for the I2B2 community meeting. Um, and so I had 45 minutes to talk about this in July, but I'm trying to condense, condense this into 15 minutes today. So pardon my speed as I rush through. Uh, we have a journal article, a software release on GitHub. Uh, we're recruiting beta testers. I'll give you links for this information at the end of the, of the talk. So the what and the why. The what of this is that there should be a way to make our patient social and environmental data available to our I2B2 researchers. And so what kind of exposures are we talking about for, um, for CEDO? These are not diagnoses, but these are CEDOs. These are exposures based on a patient's home address. This is precise information that is on a per census tract basis. So we need to know which census tract the patient lives in. Uh, the data are objective, they're not patient reported. They're reliable because they're published and periodically updated by government agencies. And uh, why are we doing this? Well, we feel that researchers should be able to infer causality perhaps, or identify trends when they in investigate the social and environmental factors where a, uh, where a patient lives. And we have the technology. So how do we do this? Identifying sources of CEDO data. We've identified seven or eight different sources collect CEDO data, about 38 different, um, different measures for each census tract in, in the country, uh, identify the best practices for geocoding our patient addresses, geocode the patient addresses and map them to census tracts, and then we develop the CEDO ontology for I2B2 to make this data available through the I2B2 interface to our researchers. And we enhance the patient records using the CEDO data, and then we have an I2B2 that makes this available to researchers who would like to use it, for example, for cohort discovery. Uh, the last step was to automate steps two, four, and six, and that gives us our toolkit. And that's not something that I personally was involved in. I was involved in the development of the ontology, but, um, but the toolkit is an absolutely um, uh, Im important part of this whole thing. And I want to share that with you too. In July, I mentioned in more detail the people who were involved in developing this I will mention that the ones who are, who are highlighted in red here are our leadership over the last few years. Um, and this is basically the people who are working on this, um, on this project. Uh, again, more detail if you watch the slideshow from July. So CEDO data sources, we have identified uh, seven or eight of them. First one is the American Community Survey, which is prepared by the Census Bureau. That gives us 29 measures of race, ethnicity, education, income, housing, and economic stability. Again, this is on a per census tract basis. So these are not measures, these are not, these are not measures that can be identified you know, for individual, uh, individual patients. This is information that is associated with the patient's address. And so it's information that can be ascribed to a patient's um, location where they, where they live, 
and, um, and give it information about the kind of exposures that a patient has. Okay, uh, also from the US Department of Agriculture, food access, we have two measures of food accessibility. The CDC provides us with a social vulnerability index there that's based on 15 different social factors. Uh, we use the ESRI business analyst to give us liquor store density or alcohol access. Um, ESRI is not available to everyone. I believe it's a um, subscribed, uh, you need to subscribe for that. Um, uh, California EnviroScreen, part of the California EPA, gave us five measures of air quality and water quality. This is for California only though. And uh, there's also a unit of the Keck School of Medicine that, um, that we worked with to get four additional measures of air quality. This is for Southern California only. And this was data that were collected, I think um, over 10 years ago. So these are not the latest data, but they could be applicable for older addresses from uh, our patients. So this is the data uh, set of data that we use at Keck currently in our I2B2 setup. Um, so for our toolkit, we removed the ESRI because like I said, ESRI is subscribed, but we did add two additional measures of air quality from NASA. And we've, um, we've de-emphasized the information from Keck School of Medicine. As I said, those uh, air quality data were a little bit older, so that's grayed out here. Okay, so when we look at the I2B2 standard um, ontology, you see that I've added this here. I've added this into a, um, a uh, project that was provided to me on the data enclave, the I2B2 data enclave, uh, by Michael Mendes and uh, Diane Keo. Thank you very much for the opportunity to add this. I want to say that in putting this together, we looked originally at ICD, we looked at LOINC. They didn't quite have the information that we were looking for, which is basically exposures and, um, and uh, not diagnoses. Uh, having more information about this slide, if you were to re um, review the July um, 2009, excuse me, July um, slideshow. Um, so this is what it looks like, 38 different measures um, arranged in this, um, in this um, hierarchy. I'd like to give a demo of that right now. So if you can still see my screen, oh no, don't time out. Okay, so if you can still see my screen, I have I2B2 here. This is again, the data enclave, that, the project that was set up for me. And I added our social and environmental determinants of health here. Um, as you can see, there's some data here in red, some lines here in red that are kind of like notices that we set up, notes for the, for the researcher to see what exactly is this CEDO data? How can I use it? How should it be used in, in I2B2? And how is it different from the other parts of the ontology in I2B2? Um, and here you see we have alcohol access, drinking water quality, population density, employment rate, excuse me, unemployment rate, uh, air quality indicators from two different sources, Oh, I closed it. Sorry, here we are, air quality indicators. If I take one, for example, ozone, and I, um, and I mouse over it, you see the tooltip there. It's too small for you to see, but I'll let you know that it says here that the EPA standard for, for a high value, according to the EPA, is 0 0.07 parts per million and higher. So let's say that I want to look for patients in our I2B2 who live in a census tract where the air quality is considered high ozone. And I'll say, I wanna look for greater than or even greater than or equal to 70, excuse me, 70 parts per million. And I can enter that. And so for, for each of these 38 measures, we have a filter available. So you can specify what level uh, you're looking for in your, in your patient cohort. Uh, we also have burden, education, uh, ethnicity, um, the food accessibility in the census tract for housing. We have uh, age of the housing um, area in that census tract. Um, for example, and then there's um, difficulties with housing, percentage of occupied units lacking a complete kitchen, lacking plumbing, units with no bedrooms, et cetera. Income measures, we have several of those. Race for the, um, for the, uh, it's the, um, racial um, profile of the um, census tract where the patient lives. Um, so uh, I'd like to uh, leave this demo right now. I don't have any actual data associated with, uh, with this right now. 
uh, but we do at USC. Um, and um, going back to the slideshow. Oops, uh, here we are. So there were some caveats associated with using this ontology. And I went into detail about each of these things again in the July slideshow. Please have a look at that when you get a chance. Um, use cases. This is new. I did not have this in the July slideshow, so I'll, I'll spend a little bit more time on this. But Dr. Zhanghua Chen, um, assistant professor at the Keck School of Medicine, she's an environmental epide epidemiologist and biostatistician. She used our CEDO ontology in I2B2 for cohort discovery. Um, she's using I2B2 and the REDCap platforms. Um, and um, this was very helpful to her in, in um, uh, defining a cohort for her, um, for her uh, uh, clinical trial. Uh, again, this is, um, she started this last year and she's still using this. Okay, another use case is asthma risk score. Now this was developed by Dr. Juan Espinoza at um, uh, Ch Children's Hospital Los Angeles. They used Cerner over there and they didn't use this with I2B2. They took the information that we're able to get from the different CEDO sources. And instead of putting it in I2B2, they used this information for, for their patients in Cerner. And they came up with something called an asthma risk score where it, the score goes from one low risk to five high risk. They put this in Cerner on their mPage platform, which is part of Cerner. It can probably be done for Epic as well. And it looks like this. So clinician can see a asthma risk score for his patients. A patient asthma history on the left and recommendations based on the risk score. Environmental risk score here in the center is based on population density, age of housing in the, in the patient's neighborhood and the air quality in the patient's neighborhood. There's a social risk score on the right side. And you see that's based on um, uh, FPL, so that's the uh, federal poverty level. And so um, this is based on income in the patient's uh, area, social vulnerability index in where they live, and um, uh, food access in their neighborhood. So thank you for letting me share these uh, use cases with you. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit now about the Sende toolkit. Sende is our social and environmental determinants address enhancement tool. Its internal name is GIS Toolkit. If you hear me access, if you hear me refer to it as our GIS Toolkit, please excuse me. Uh, functionality is, as I mentioned earlier, this is our automated way of geocoding patient addresses, downloading the CEDO data from the different government sources, uh, and enhancing the patient addresses with um, with the CEDO data. So um, there are some requirements for this. Um, I went into more detail again in the slideshow from July. Please have a look at that uh, if you're interested in using the toolkit. Uh, again, I have a couple more slides here about the functionality and execution, but I want to spend a little time on example slides. So let me leave the slideshow for a moment and come over here. The first example file that I want to show you is an example of the patient address that you would send into the toolkit. And so, for example, here's an address, Camino Real in Atascadero, California. There's start date and end date, which is the valid dates that the patient was living at this address. And an address ID, which we would use with a different table to associate this with the patient ID and I2B2. So this is how we would link the data back to a patient in I2B2 is through this address ID. So um, there's no other patient information in this file. It's just the address and the dates that the address is valid. Uh, when we send this into our Sende or GIS toolkit, you'll see that it comes back with some, I added, I highlighted these in red, spatial GeoID, which is the census tract that's associated with this patient's address, and the latitude and longitude were also used to get to that census tract. Okay, um, when we continue running this through our uh, toolkit, uh, another output is this Excel file. This Excel file has tabs. You see the tabs listed down here. There's 38 tabs, one for each of the measures, the CEDO measures that you want to put into your I2B2 database. And the, the list of addresses is broken out by uh, validity dates. And so we have, for example, this Atascadero. It has a record for 2011 to 2013. 
Atascadero has another record for 2014 to 2015. And Atascadero has another record for 2016. Um, each of those records has a different value of the social vulnerability index based on when that, um, based on um, the valid dates for that address. And so you get a number of different records back for each address based on the validity dates of that address and the validity dates of the CEDO data that we're bringing in. Again, there's 38 tabs here, one for each, uh, one for each um, CEDO variable. All right, thank you for letting me short, share that with you. I'll go back to the slideshow and I'll say that the next thing I wanted to share with you is just a list of resources. And so uh, first one is Praveen Angyan, who is our um, technical lead, applications lead for, uh, for the clinical research informatics team. There's his email address there and you would contact him if you're interested in any of this ontology, toolkit, becoming a beta tester, et cetera. Sunday, resource for expanding research into social and environmental determinants of health. That's the article that was published in the, in the past couple of months. Our corresponding author is Neil Barus, who is our director of clinical research informatics. Uh, we have a couple of GitHub links here, one for the GIS toolkit, one for the wiki, which is where the ontology files will live. I don't think they've been updated. I don't think they've been um, uh, uploaded there yet. The ontology demo that I shared with you in the data enclave there's a link for that here, along with the username and password to get to that project. Details of the CEDO data sources. I said there were seven or eight different sources. Details of the data measures. There's 38 different measures. And uh, slides and recording from the July, to, uh, July presentation to the community, um, community meeting that's available also. Uh, so thank you very much for your attention. I appreciate it. All right, Mark, thank you very much. I um, appreciate that. 